from the door to the building. The supermarket was open and customers trickled in and out. He opened the glove compartment and took out the gun and placed it behind it between his thighs on the car seat. He never fired a gun in his life, let alone owned one. But he'd read, he'd read enough books and articles and he knew the basics. The safety, the caliber of damage it would, it could invariably cause. I'm crazy. Totally crazy, he thought. He'd been in love before, of course, but never had he been so obsessed with a woman, a girl, or missed her so much. Without her, he realized, now, he was nothing. However much he knew that things could never have worked out between them after the initial year-long honeymoon of covert meetings and fiery fucks in forbidden places, he still couldn't give up on her totally, admit defeat. Let her and him get on with their respective lives. She was younger. She still had a life, adventures as she put it, ahead of her. He didn't. Not without her. It was a few weeks before when he'd been doing some internet research for a story that he'd stumbled across a pornographic website replete with photos submitted by non-professionals. Openly voyeuristic images of nudity, both simple and extreme, and of couples having intercourse. He distractedly spent a quarter of an hour surfing through the images and noting the monotonous, the monotonous, monotonous repetition, oppositions and angles. When he came across a series of eight shots to which, in which a woman's face was out of the frame, but her opulent white ass stood front and center, her wet pink gash circled by unruly black curls, fully exposed along with a puckered areola of her back door. The young woman was on her knees, her beard right in the camera's face. From image to image, the arse came nearer and nearer to the floor, and in the final three photographs, a resplendent thick and hard penis took aim at the woman's cunt, and it was then cementing it and finally deeply embedded up to the woman's head. He had of course seen a thousand photographs of this kind before, but this time, the shape, the colour, the detail of the woman's ass recalled hers in indelible resemblance. He'd been violently sick, rushing to the bathroom and spewing out of the contents of his stomach over the carpet long before reaching the safety of his ceramic bowl. It had been like a knife to his heart. Naturally, he knew that he could not expect her to keep on being faithful to him in the whole year since their breakup. And since when do women in their twenties have to act as nuns? Somehow the images on his laptop had brought it all her. The idea of another man fucking her, owning her, playing with her, and worse, getting her to allow him to broadcast photographs of their terrible intimacy in the A few hours later, he, did, he had hesitantly, hesitantly peered at the photographs again and realized it actually wasn't her, couldn't be her. A few meshes of the woman's hair were in the frame of one of the images, and the color was not hers. Also, there was a distinctive moral absent in the familiar area of the lunar landscape discovered to his relief. But the seed was still there. The scar was still there. Inside him. Who was she with now? When did she love? Who did she love now? She who had once loved him. The door to the building opened and a woman walked out, blunt, dark haired, almost a vision of what turned as he might have been. Twenty years later, the mother, the heat of the day, hammered against the parked car, but he couldn't switch the air conditioning on or had people go flat. Was she now alone in her room in a large two floor apartment? Or maybe she was now in a small hotel room by Lake Rashad, being found by another man. It had been after all she who had discovered that hideaway. Enough! Enough! I'm sick, I'm sick. Sick enough to climb the stairs of the apartment, ring the bell, confront her when she opened the door, and brandish the gun. If you can't be mine, you can't be anyone else's. The pitiful stuff of tabloid journalism, come on. He could sit here all day and not see her, he realized, and even if she did emerge, what would he do then? Follow her? Stalk her? He'd lose her, he'd lose her in traffic, most likely. In her anger, when he would refuse to let her go and beg for a last meeting, a final embrace, a penultimate conversation. 
she would always fire back that he had no respect for her and could not accept what she felt. She had these crazy ideas about respect, but he did understand what she meant. In a letter, one of so many, too many, he'd written that loving her was also knowing when to let her go. But it was a precept he'd proven incapable of adhering to. What the fuck was he doing in Rome? What the hell was he doing with a gun?